This video will discuss payroll time entry using the PTE app. Once you have downloaded the app, go ahead and open it up. The job that you are working on should be listed here at the top. If you work on multiple jobs, select the job number and choose the one that you are putting time in for. Next, go ahead and select the labor time text. Here you will find the list of employees on your job. Make sure the date and job number at the top are correct. Select the person's name. Let's go ahead and enter time for this employee for the day. On the right hand side, you will see hours for day. So that's the total amount of hours worked in that particular day. Uh, today, Al worked eight, so we can just go ahead and leave that at eight. You would be able to increase this um, if you worked a 10 or 12 hour shift, um, but we'll discuss overtime a little later in the video. So now that we have established that Al worked eight hours for the day, um, we look below the blue bar here, and now we have to put in um, hours per entry. So you'd need multiple entries if, say, he worked on two different phase codes within his shift, um, or again, if he worked overtime, which we'll discuss later. For the sake of this example, we're just going to say that Al worked on one phase code for his shift. Next, go ahead and take a look at entry type. The default will be set at labor. The options here include labor, labor equipment, equipment, and job only we will not use, and then vacation, holiday, sick time off, and unpaid time off. Moving on to pay level. Pay level one is gonna be first shift, Level two is second shift, level three is third shift, and level four is height shift. Next, we can look at condition if somebody was late or there was weather, and there's also a place where we can write in notes. Go ahead and skip wage code. We will not use that, and go down to pay type. The default will be set at regular, but here you can also add overtime and double time. The next selection will be phase code. These should be preset for your job and go ahead and put in the phase code of what that employee worked on today. Now that we've finished Al's timesheet for the day, we just want to make sure that the unallocated shows 0.00. .00. Go ahead and click the top right hand corner to save. This will bring you back to the labor time page. You should see a curved arrow around Al's name. So this means that we basically have put hours to his timesheet, but we haven't synced it yet. So go ahead and click on the top left hand corner where it says main. And down the bottom, you should see a button where we can sync it and go ahead and click that. To make sure everything's synced properly, go ahead and click on labor time and then make sure we see the green check mark. Now if we had multiple employees working that day, we'd want to go ahead and enter everybody's time and then sync. Okay, next, let's go ahead and review overtime if somebody works a 10-hour day. Go ahead and click labor time, select the employee, and up at the top, you see hours for day. So we got to switch this from 8 at the default to 10. Now, because of the 10-hour shift, there's going to be 8 hours of regular pay and 2 hours of overtime. So we're going to have to do two different entries. So the first one, we'll do 8 hours of regular time. We'll notice that we still have two unallocated hours. Go ahead and hit the plus sign at the top of the page for the second entry of this day. Change pay type to overtime.
Next, we're going to review multiple phase codes per day. So if somebody worked on two different areas of the building, we want to go ahead and enter that in two different entries. For the first entry, I'm going to add 6.5 hours into a particular phase code. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus sign to add another entry. And then put in the additional 1.5 hours into another phase code. Don't forget to save, then sync, and confirm on the labor time page that there's a green check mark next to his name. This app has the ability to copy from old entries, making it easier as the job progresses. Cloning by date. This allows us to duplicate an employee's hours from a previous day. In this example, Al has worked the same hours on the same phase code the previous day. So we can go ahead and copy that entry for the 25th. We can also clone by employee. This will give us the ability to duplicate another employee's entry. So if Nick and Albert work side by side, I can use Nick's entry to match Albert's. Don't forget to save, then sync, and confirm on the labor time page that there's a green check mark next to his name.